and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and for those of you joining us who are blind or low vision, I'm a white 34-year-old woman with short, dark blonde hair. I'm wearing a white t-shirt with a little pocket, and there's a big bookcase behind me with books and other things on it, and art on the walls. Happy Disability Pride Month, everyone! This month, we'll be highlighting artists with disabilities, and today, we're going to make art in the style of Nancy Rourke. You will need something to draw or paint on, and something to draw or paint with. You can make these by hand or digitally, whatever works for you. Andy's off for the rest of the summer, so this is a standalone activity. And today, we're going to highlight art by Nancy Rourke, who is a deaf painter and artivist. I have a picture next to me of Nancy, who is an upper middle-aged woman with Native American heritage with long brown hair. She is wearing black glasses and smiling widely at the camera. She wears a long black sleeved shirt and is sitting in front of paintings that feature hands painted in red, blue, yellow, black, white, and gray. And now let's turn to a clip from a 2010 interview with Nancy at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. We'll see Nancy describing several of her paintings using American Sign Language. And there's a woman's voiceover, so hearing people can follow along. This was from the book, Understanding Deaf Culture in Search of Deaf Hood by Dr. Patty Ladd. When I read that book, I decided to borrow that concept and put it into one of my paintings. And here you see the deaf way. They're using a round table. The deaf people are seated at the table with a light overhead in the center so everyone can see each other easily. They're having a conversation about deaf culture. The book on the table is, uh, displays the concepts that I learned from Patty Ladd's book. He talked about subalterns, elites, and rebels. Some people within the community tend to exhibit these features, and the people in the painting are all doing that. The person on the far left is signing, really, really? The next person to his left is signing, that's incredible. The woman in the center with the blue hair is signing, finally. The next person isn't saying anything. The next person is signing how horrible that is. The woman on the far right with the red hair is signing yes. And the person who's back to us is signing cooperate. Underneath the table is a deaf dog. You can see that the deaf dog, it says I am deaf. And up here is a picture of Laurent Claire. I have one separate work of art of Laurent Claire that I did, and he is in this work of art. I used yellows and blues and reds with black and white. I tried to balance the colors throughout the painting. I wanted the focal point of the painting to come right here into the center of the table. Yes, I do think there is some cubism here. Picasso was a slight influence, a slight influence on me. This was inspired from the ABC cards that you would see a long time ago. There would be deaf peddlers in public areas that would peddle these cards, and at the end of the card, they always showed the sign for and. You don't see that in this day and age. So I used a little bit of deaf history and put it into this piece of work. When I painted this, I used a lot of masking tape. I'd put the tape on the canvas, 
and then it would help me to brush the specific squares for each of the hand shapes. So I did that throughout the canvas. Even though it was wet, I used the masking tape. And there was a lot of tape on the canvas. I wanted to balance the colors that I chose, so I chose contrasting colors. You'll see here I've got the blue with the red, which are contrasting colors, and the black. And the hand shapes are sketches of my own hand. I made each of the hand shapes and I drew them, I sketched them. I added the arrows that you can see in this letter Z and for the signed AND and for the J because you would see those arrows on the ABC cards. And this was inspired by Matisse's work called The Dance. This is about deaf hood, meaning that deaf people are diverse. And it doesn't matter what background you come from, whether you're wearing a cochlear implant or you're oral or you use ASL in your daily life, we're all deaf regardless of who we are and we're united in that way. And you can see that the people are holding each other with the hand shapes to be connected, and it infers the sign for unity. This one, I used green color. As I said, I use it rarely. Uh, but in this specific case, it's more of a blue-green, and it's showing grass. So it's all right that I used green in this painting. This is called Friends in Deaf Hood. And the people are holding hands with the hand shape for friend. So they're showing that they're friends. Let's be friends. Let's celebrate our friendship and our deafhood. And this was also inspired by Matisse's work, The Dance. And this is from my own experience when I was a young girl. I had to learn how to listen and how to speak. I was given a new hearing aid at the time. The person in yellow is the audiologist. And I tried to make this look ironic. Often audiologists would say airplane and baseball and hot dog, and that's what the three figures in the background are doing. The audiologist would use the same word again and again and again, year after year. It almost felt, well, it was distasteful. It was really rather insulting. I didn't understand why they used the same three words repeatedly over the years. So I decided to make the painting more ironic. And you'll see in the background, the background are images of the sound booths that we used to sit in with the audiologist. Looks like a pegboard and colored in gray. So this just brought back memories. Honestly, it was a nightmare for me. This painting, Say the Word, uh, there was another deaf artist who made a painting using the similar concept and entitled it Say the Word, and I had no idea of this other painting. I just happened to paint this from my own experience. This one is from my own experience. This is really an example of autism. I felt forced that I had to wear a hearing aid. And at that time, the hearing aid we, was connected with a wire and put in a pocket on our shirt. And the kids at school would make fun of me, and they would mock me. They saw the wire to my hearing aid, and they would flick it with their finger and pull the hearing aid off my ear. It was a very unpleasant experience, and if you look at the image of the person, the person signing deaf, and as a deaf person I would prefer to sign, but I was forced to wear a hearing aid.
and I entitled this work, I Am Deaf. This painting is something that recently happened. And from what I learned from California, Bill AB 2072, after that was uh, turned down, they voted and they allowed, they talked about babies who are hearing. It would be a good idea for them to learn sign language for fun, whereas babies who were deaf were forced to learn spoken English, forced to have cochlear implants, forced to practice the English speech sounds with their hands. So on the bottom, you see the deaf baby, and on the top, you see the hearing baby, the hearing baby signing, and the deaf baby being forced to use English. It's ironic. This one is from my own experience. And this was from the time when I was a graphic designer working for a, a company. The people in color are my coworkers, And this is an example of a social event, a party, where everybody's chatting and enjoying themselves. But I'm feeling left out. I'm in black and white, which shows that I'm not happy. And I'm feeling sad. The figures in colors, I would ask them, well, what did this person say or what did that person say? And you'll see them holding up their finger. They're saying, wait a minute, we'll tell you later. The figures in colors show that they're happy and they're engaged and involved, whereas the figure in black and white representing myself shows that I'm not. What did you notice in this clip? Did you notice that Nancy has included hands in all of her paintings? What else did you notice? I love that the colors she uses symbolize different things to her. Like, she uses the color yellow to show where light is illuminating things so that deaf people can see clearly and stay engaged. I also love how political her art is. She isn't making statements about deafness as a disability. Instead, Nancy Rourke celebrates deaf culture by including it in her art and using metaphors to uplift the community. She uses her art to call out ableism, and autism in particular, which is discrimination or prejudice against individuals who are deaf or hard of hearing. I encourage you to watch the beginning of this interview to learn more about Nancy's life and experience. There's a link in the description to the full thing. And now, how can we make art in the style of Nancy Rourke? That's right, it's art making time. Today, we're making drawings or paintings in the style of Nancy Rourke. Start by thinking of signs that you know in American Sign Language. If you don't know any signs, think of words that you'd like to say using sign language and look up how to sign them. You can find lots of instructional videos on YouTube by searching for ASL lessons. Once you have your word, letters, or phrase, make the signs with your hands and sketch them just like Nancy. After you have your sketches, color them in using primary colors, red, blue, yellow, black, gray, and white. If you want an extra challenge, give the colors meaning and include metaphor or other symbols in your piece. You could spend five minutes or a whole week making your art inspired by Nancy Rourke. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it on another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Be safe, wear your masks, happy art making, and happy Disability Pride Month, friends. See ya!